Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, aging impact on the electrical performance of high-frequency PCBs. Here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod, and I am a market development engineer for Rogers Corporation Advanced Circuit Materials. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about the aging effects of uh, printed circuit boards and how that affects electrical performance. Now, as we all know, everything changes with time. Everything as it ages will change, and a printed circuit board is no different. The electrical properties of a printed circuit board will change over a given period of time. There's actually about four items that contribute to the aging of the printed circuit board and how it changes electrical performance. Those four things would be the uh, circuit design itself and uh, then the environment that the circuit is operating in and then also the circuit fabrication process that's made that was used to make the circuits and then finally the circuit materials themselves. So the environment is actually very important uh, and a warm environment or hot environment actually accelerates the aging effects and an environment with uh, oxygen uh, also uh, accelerates the aging effects. So if you had a circuit board that was in a space application where there is no oxygen, then the aging effects pretty much stop or they're slowed to the point where it wouldn't be perceivable. In the high frequency printed circuit board industry, there are generally two types of materials that are used as a classification. There are the PTFE circuit materials and there are the uh, thermal set materials. Now the PTFE based materials, uh, they have aging issues like everything does, uh, but I'm not going to talk much about those today. I'm going to talk really about the thermal set materials. Now thermal set materials, when they go through aging, uh, what happens is the exposed substrate will oxidize. And as this oxidation occurs, it actually changes the dielectric constant at the surface and it raises the dielectric constant. Again, temperature and the environment will affect this. A higher temperature will cause this uh, oxidation to happen more quickly. And then also uh, ox oxygen has to be present, obviously, for this to happen. Now the following slides is an excerpt from a uh, study that we did some time ago that shows uh, the effects of oxidation on changing the dielectric constant of some materials as well as some circuits we made on these same materials. This slide is using uh, 20 mil thick materials and uh, this material has a nominal dielectric constant of about 3.6 and you can see that in the case of the material where the laminate was fully etched and the substrate is completely uh, exposed to the environment. In this case, the environment is 85 degrees C. You can see that the dielectric constant changes over time. Now the time is the uh, x-axis and it's pretty far out there. And this is time in days. And you can see over a long period of time, uh, about 250 days or so, uh, this material changes the dielectric constant and has a change of an increase of dielectric constant of about 0.14 to 0.15. Now if you take this time scale out to the right even farther, you'll find that it pretty much plateaus there. So it does become an equilibrium state where the oxidization just uh, comes to a point and stops. So this particular material will get to the point of increasing dielectric constant about 0.15 and with a nominal dielectric constant about 3.6, that's about a 4% difference in dielectric constant. Now with a lot of circuits, a 4% difference in dielectric constant is typically not a, uh, a real concern, but this is one of those issues that we want to make sure the designers are aware of. Now also along with this study, we, uh, we made some transmission line circuits and it was made on the exact same material and exposed to the same conditions and these are the red and blue curves. Now the red and blue curves show how these transmission lines are changing performance and how they're reporting back the change in dielectric constant and you can see that these circuits are not changing dielectric constant as much as the raw substrate and there's several reasons for that. So as the slide shows, a raw material uh, exposed to the elements, in this case 85 degrees C, it oxidized and over that time that was shown on the slide, uh, the dielectric constant does change and it does go up. Now the circuits didn't change that much and the reason why is because these transmission line circuits have a signal conductor and a ground plane and these copper features actually protect the substrate from it oxidizing. So the electric fields between the signal and the ground plane are, are in substrate that are not oxidized, the substrate is not oxidizing. Now there is some oxidization next to the conductor on the surface and there's some fringing fields picking up on that and that's probably what you're seeing when the circuit is reporting the change in dielectric constant. The, uh, the other thing is this, uh, the circuit design really depends a lot on um, how much the aging effects are noticed. So the transmission lines, as I've already showed, they do not see the uh, difference in dielectric constant that much. 
And also the same would be true with stub tuning and features like that. Some of the features that are edge coupled, where you have a conductor that is coupled to another, conduct, another conductor, the electric fields are going across the surface substrate and that surface is oxidizing. And in that case, the edge coupled features can actually uh, be more sensitive to this effect of the, uh, the surface oxidizing. The next slide is going to show a little bit more information on edge coupled features and how that actually is more sensitive to this oxidation effect. Uh, on this slide you can see that the, this is the same curves as we showed last time but now I've added the performance of the edge coupled bandpass filters and you can see that they have reacted uh, to this aging differently in the transmission lines and that's because these edge coupled features are picking up on the substrate that's oxidizing and they're reporting back in this study to a raised uh, dielectric constant in this case they get up to around 0.05 increase and uh, that is normal for edge coupled features. So the circuit design really does have a lot to do with how this oxidation effect will affect the uh, performance of the circuit. And again, transmission lines and stubs probably not too much effect, edge coupled features more effect, and then in the case of etching copper completely off the substrate, that's a worst case scenario. That concludes this visit to Coonrod's Corner and I want to thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers technical information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.